The Nintendo 64. A lot of people love this system, but then there's also people who think it really sucks. But how can anybody hate this thing? I mean, this is the self-proclaimed fun machine after all. Well, while the system does have some major high points attached to it, it also has some issues that it gets criticized for pretty regularly. The biggest issue a lot of people have with it is just the controller itself. I loved this controller as a kid, and even I thought, what in the world is this when I first saw it at my neighbor's house? I had so many questions, like how on earth are you supposed to hold this thing if it has three handles? Am I supposed to grow a third arm? How do I reach the L button? Am I supposed to switch handles on the fly? Well, it turns out that you kind of just ignore the handle on the left. It's where you'll find the D-pad, which wasn't really used for Nintendo 64 games, since the focus at the time was 3D games and the fancy new analog stick. Bearing in mind that the controller was designed before the console came out, the thinking by Nintendo when they were designing it was that 3D hadn't completely taken over yet, so the D-pad was just kind of Frankensteined on there in case it was needed for 2D games. Nowadays, you'll see a lot of people using alternative controllers that resemble something a little more conventional. However, even with a better controller, some of these games can still be awkward to control, and a lot of times that has to do with the camera. Take Super Mario 64 for example. Considered one of the best games of all time, it still has some funky camera controls that can feel awkward when compared to more recent 3D Mario games. It makes sense in a way, I mean they were just figuring all this stuff out as they transitioned into the 3D space. As for the first party Nintendo controllers, there were still some things that people liked about them as well as some reasons that they appeal to collectors nowadays. For starters, they came in a ton of colors, so that's pretty fun, right? In fact, the console itself came in a ton of different colors, maybe more than any other mainstream system ever, if you exclude handhelds. The colors weren't just for looking at either, as they played into the multiplayer aspect of the system. You could play this system with up to four people, and when you got together to play with friends, you could tell the controllers apart by the color. This way, you wouldn't have to write your name on your controller like a dork. And speaking of playing games with friends, remember when that was a thing? Playing games with friends you know in the same room and not random people online? I mean, what's more fun than that? And this system was designed around great four-player games that you could play with your friends. Games like Mario Kart, Super Smash Bros, Goldeneye, and Mario Party created the kind of screaming excitement and laughter that would have parents come into the room just to check and make sure everything was okay. And then perhaps make some lame comment about how everybody needs to settle down. It's like, we're playing Mario Kart, we are not gonna settle down. But when it comes to the games, another knock against the N64 is that the great games were few and far between. There's definitely some truth to that, and while that is a negative overall, there actually is an odd benefit to this. Let me explain what I mean. Okay, so most people only bought so many games when they were younger, and the system's library being so top-heavy made sure most people had the same games. The benefit? Everybody was more on the same level. For single-player games, odds are you could talk to your friends about any game you had because they probably owned it too. And for multiplayer games, everybody knew how to play it because they all had it. This is important because multiplayer games are greatly enhanced by having a group of people who are all really competent at the game. The better the competition, the more fun the game is going to be. I remember running into a few kids back in the day who invited me over to play multiplayer in some game I'd never even played before. And of course, they whooped my butt and then even bragged about it after. It's like, okay dude, good for you, you've clearly played the game more than me. Anyways, back to my point, every time a great game came out for the N64, it was an event because everybody was talking about it and playing it. Everybody knew what it was, everybody cared. Even the big single player only games were like that because everybody would want to talk about how far they'd gotten, what secrets they'd found, or whatever. Does that mean the system having more good games would have made it worse? Heck no, I'm just saying why it was still a lot of fun. I mean, some of these games are considered the best games of all time. Maybe the N64 library isn't vast enough that it's the only system you'd ever need, 
But that doesn't mean you should just ignore the great games that were there. That just doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay, now let's move on to the next big thing that the N64 gets criticized for, and that would be the visuals. Okay, so first of all, well, yeah, they kind of do look bad. I've always thought of them as some of the early growing pains for 3D. But hold on, are we not retro gamers? Isn't our mantra graphics don't matter? Well, here's our chance to prove it. It's all about the gameplay and having fun, right? And of course, it's entirely possible to have issues with the graphics of some of these games while still loving them. Also, make sure you're educated on the best way to hook up the video for this. Plugging an original N64 directly into an HDTV is just not the way to do it. I would suggest the YouTube channel My Life and Gaming for all video hookup questions. Those guys know their stuff. Okay, one of the last points is going to be about the fact that the games were on cartridges and not CDs. This is another one of those polarizing aspects of the system. It's both good and bad at the same time. The reason why it's bad is because it's considered why most third-party developers didn't bother with the system. Cartridges were more expensive to make and didn't have nearly as much storage space on them as CDs did. But since we're stuck with cartridges, let's just think about the benefits. Well, no loading times, and there's just something about a cartridge that yells retro in the best way possible. I mean, discs in a case are totally fine, but there's just something cool about a cartridge. It also meant that the system was a lot more reliable since there weren't any moving parts, laser lenses to burn out, and all that nonsense. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if my N64 lasts until I'm dead, and I don't plan on dying for a while. I really wonder what on earth was done to the Nintendo 64s that no longer work. If any of you watching have a story about one breaking, I'd love to hear it. Alright, back to the third party support thing though. While the third party support was weak, Nintendo did at least have heavy support from their second party developer Rareware. You know, back when they were really good. These guys were coming off huge success with the Donkey Kong Country series on Super Nintendo and just carried all that momentum into their work for the Nintendo 64. They cranked out hit after hit across multiple genres and many people consider this time to be the high point for them as a studio. Sure, the console basically just had the good games that were made by either Rareware or Nintendo themselves, but I suppose that's better than if it were just Nintendo by themselves. So there you have it, some good and some bad for what I'd say is one of gaming's most polarizing consoles. Personally, I love it despite its flaws, but I would definitely be curious to know what all of you think of it. Do you love it, hate it, or perhaps you have the ever popular option of mixed feelings? Be sure to let us know down in the comments and I will see ya in the next video.